Welcome to CPE 605 Mathematical Modeling in Computer Engineering for the first semester of 2013. My name is Sandeep Thampromon. I will be your instructor of this course throughout this semester. This is a backup session for the purpose of reviewing materials that were covered in the lecture. I will go through the first few slides quickly. These are the course information. You can contact me via email given here if you have any questions about the lecture or anything related to mathematical modeling. For the course website, I have created a Facebook group which some of you may have already known. So ask your friend about that information and join the group. We will, I will distribute the handouts and video of this course through the Facebook website. You can also use it to ask any questions you have or discuss anything, lecture, assignments, projects, with your friends and me. These are the two textbooks used in this course. Before the midterm, we will use the content from Seal's textbook. After the midterm, the main textbook will be Giordano's and author online materials. These are the prerequisites of this course. You should understand the basic calculus, linear algebra, and statistics. You will also need to write programs from time to time to implement the model in order to solve the problems you have chosen. Now, these are the learning outcome of this course. After this course, you should be able to understand the complex system in terms of mathematical models. You should also be able to translate the problem into the model and solve it to answer the question the to, to answer the question that you seek. What is this course all about? This course is about observing the phenomena, whether they are of artificial or natural causes, and formulate questions about them. You learn how to translate your problems or questions into mathematical models. For example, the figure shows speech signals. To create a model that is able to transform such a time-varying continuous data into a discrete symbolic sequence, and the model will reflect the behavior of the data that it represents. You learn how to write a program given a model. Different models have their own implementation already. We will look at the basic steps of how can we implement the models we study in this class. You will learn how to interpret the results of the model to answer your question or solve your problems. And we will explore varieties of real-world problems and their models in this course. Here are examples of real-world problems that we will study in this course. First and one of the most important to some of you is about money. We can use mathematical modeling to model money spending, earning, interest, debt. From those, you can ask, for example, these questions. What is an optimum point of investment? What should you pay your mortgage? To minimize the interest, what will happen if bank increases the interest rate? With math mathematical modeling, you can answer this question correctly and accurately. Models can be created to describe the transmission of the disease or viruses. Such a model can be used to predict the severity of the disease in, in a global scale or even create a simulation game from it, as some of you may have already played. Models can be used to study the growth of population from the macro level, like human population, or to the micro level, like bacterial culture. Models can be used to predict the result of an election based on the historical data. It can be used to tackle the climate change problems, such as predicting the incoming tsunami, predicting the typhoon paths, or forecasting the weather. Or coming closer to us, 
we can use simulation model to test and design the computer network so that the effectiveness and the efficiencies are optimal to the design. We can use it to represent the human behavior in some internet security problems. We can use the modeling techniques to find optimum design of some of the designs to maximize the objective function or minimize the error function. We can use the model to represent signals and performing tasks related to them, such as classification, analysis, or synthesis. Now, what is a mathematical model then? We can look at it from two different sides. To the real world side, mathematical model relates to hypotheses, question, problems, process, observations, and mechanisms. To the computational world, it relates to data structure, computer, algorithm, and programming. So to the real world, a model is an abstract representation of a phenomenon that you are studying. And if we look at it from a computational world, it is a tool to perform a quantitative study. Models can help us in different ways. These are the list of advantages of mathematical modeling that I can think of. First, it provides the means of testing our knowledge about natural phenomenon. Second, it forces us to make our theoretical postulations or assumptions as explicit as possible. Thirdly, it provides us with a way to use computers to solve the problem. Fourth, it allows us to test hypotheses safely. And finally, it allows us to predict the results of unstable or untested conditions. Let's look at examples of these advantages one by one. The first example is the use of mathematical modeling to allow us to test our knowledge. For example, we can create a model of populations who are contracted with disease to study the dynamics of different groups. To do so, we need to build a model from empirical data. Empirical in this case means that there are the knowledge gained from previous studies, from previous scientific experiments or scientific observations. We can use those knowledge as the basis to create the model. After we have that model, then we can use the observed data to train the model and make a prediction. Model also forces us to translate our hypotheses and assumptions into the mathematical statements. This makes everything more transparent. For example, if we say that the maximum bandwidth is 6.9 gigahertz, it doesn't say it's like in the, in the mathematical statements that the bandwidth is from 0 to 6.9 gigahertz. The first statement implicitly includes 0, but the second one explicitly states that there has to be some boundaries there. So when you use computer to write a program about that, it, is, it will be very clear that you need to include 0, right? Mathematical model also allow us to solve the problems using computer. Classical method to solve such problems is to do it analytically on the paper. With computational and mathematical model, we can incorporate the large amount of data to perform different tasks and answer different questions, such as to do the analysis, to perform the integration of different layers of data, or to even synthesize the data from scratch. Models allow us to create conditions that in real life might be impossible to create. For example, doctor ethics prohibit any studies that may harm the patients. So it is impossible for the doctor to let the patient suffer getting 
more and more viruses in their bodies from the disease or infection for the sake of observations. What doctor can do is to measure some biological parameters and associate them with physical response. Data gathering is merely a process of waiting for patients with different severity to come in. What we can do in this case to improve the process is to create a simulation model that associate the level of infection with physical response based on the data gathered by doctors. Such a model will provide an insight into a mechanisms of the disease. Models can be used to predict system behaviors under untested or unstable conditions, such as predicting nuclear failure. One cannot really wait until it happens. testing the building structural integrity and what it takes to destroy that building so we will know what are the weak points of the building testing aircraft reliability to know its limits so that the company or the pilot will know what they need to operate under certain conditions and others Now let's talk about the modeling process. Modeling process starts from gathering the real world data from observations. Then we can simplify the description of the data to the model. The purpose of such simplica simplification process is to capture the pattern of the data and describe it in a meaningful way. We can then analyze the model which represent the data to get the mathematical conclusion. And by interpreting the mathematical conclusion, it allows us to make prediction or explain the real world phenomena we observed. Then we can match the prediction to the actual data to verify that the model is accurate. Then the process repeats again to refine the model until it can make accurate prediction. This is another view of the modeling process. It is just like the classical notion of scientific method. We start from asking the right question about the phenomenon we study. Then, selecting an appropriate model to answer that question or solve the problem. After that, we need to formulate the model. This includes the training process, the optimization of parameters of the model. Then we have to solve and verify the model if possible. And then interpret the results of the model. If it answers the question clearly, then we can ask further question. There are many types of models in the scientific world. They can be classified based on different criteria, each of which reflects certain nature of the models. These are the list uh, that I can think of that can be used to classify the model into different dichotomies. A mathematical model can be specific or general. A specific model is created to describe a particular process and cannot be reused. For example, the left figure shows the gene regulatory network, which is a graph model. This model can be used to describe only these mechanisms. On the other hand, a general model uses a general mathematical description to describe the model, and it has a number of analogies in different fields. For example, the second order mass spring damper model can be used to describe mechanical system, electrical system, or, e or even a muscular system. The second classification, the model can be analytic, analytical, or numerical. The classical models are mostly analytical, that is, they have to be solved on the paper. 
But with the invention of computers, the models can now be simulated using computational algorithm. So we can make the projection or prediction using numerical process on computer. The model can be stochastic or deterministic. Stochastic models have random elements in them. So different simulation run produce different results. While the, det the deterministic models do not have such random elements, different run will produce the same result. The model can be decided for microscopic level, like the cell model of virus, or it can be a macroscopic design, like the epidemiology model of virus transmission. Both represent virus transmission in a certain sense, but one in the macroscopic level, while the other in the microscopic level. The model can be discrete, meaning that it works on a discrete level, or it can be continuous, that is, it works uh, with a continuous data. The model can be qualitative or quantitative. The example on the left show the qualitative models of fundamental frequency of human voice. It describes the change in fundamental frequency of human voice as asymptotic movement. On the right hand side, the figure show the quantitative model of the same process. It represents such a mechanism as a driven third order critically damped linear system. Both represent the same thing, but one is qualitative while another is quantitative. To use it in computer, we must have the quantitative implementation of the model. A model can be a black box model, meaning that the underlying mechanism is unknown. One can only observe the patterns of input and output. Such a process is usually be modeled by an optimization-oriented approach. That is, the model is firstly assumed, and then we use optimization to estimate the model parameters. On the other hand, a white or glass box model describes the model based on the connection or mechanisms of the system. Instead of observing the input and output and make the connection based on the data pattern, these types of models describe the process based on the mechanisms of the process. Okay, this is the end of this lecture. Because there will be a holiday on the next Monday, there will be no class, so see you on 19 August.